this guy, if we wouldn't have found him, like in the middle of nowhere, if we wouldn't have found this dude, he's gone. And that's just, you know, us just stumbling on people by chance or, or you know, like a 911 call or something like that. But you see so much of it, and that's not even our real mission. You know, Four Star is primarily going out there doing all the rescue calls, but Uvalde was a big thing where our team was kind of got thrust into the spotlight. A lot of that has just evolved from what, you know, society has kind of created over the years. You know, you take away funding from law enforcement, you take away support of law enforcement, and then you, you know, breed a, a workforce that trains guys to, like, ask for permission to act before they do what they know is right. You get a lot of people standing around and, and waiting for, for some initiative instead of, you know, breeding that, that warrior mindset. Anytime you mix you know, money and drugs and trafficking and stuff, there's going to be weapons. Welcome to Mic Drop, the podcast where relevancy is irrelevant and we don't give a shit about your feelings. Of course, it's different now, man. Like when you start out, you know, you have your you know, you're young guys, you're all starting out together. So you have similar experiences. Your, your families are all the same age and stuff like that. And it's like, and then time flies. And now I'm looking around and I'm like, I'm the old crusty dude in there. And it's like, yeah, um, you know, these guys are starting <laughs> to have babies and yeah. you know, you're just like, damn, I'm, yeah. you know, I blinked and now I'm one of the old dudes, you yeah. know, man, I know it. I, I think about that a lot because you know, my time in the military, I was always the youngest. I mean, I was the young, youngest student in buds, of my class I was the young guy in my platoon first platoon like and it, yeah it was a, just like and then next thing I know like now I'm the fucking old guy like just weird yeah. um in, in terms of the equipment that you guys use I know the listeners and myself uh, would be curious to know uh, of what you can talk about like especially weapon systems wise like is there a primary platform do you guys use all kinds of different shit how do, like what does your loadout look like yeah the uh you know, it's funny that there was a, somebody on YouTube had a deal that, you know, there's this kid doing loadouts, you know, you say that. Yeah. And, that, and uh, <laughs> I was like, I was looking at that. I was like, damn, that dude's equipped well. Man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, we need, need to talk budget. to, we need to talk to somebody. Cause man, I don't have that yet, yeah. but um, no, we're fortunate. Um, yeah. We're st standard primary carries M4. And then uh, we've got a few Glocks to choose from now. Um, but uh, you know, in doing cross training with a lot of these other units and and stuff we're we're very fortunate with uh you know guys are always going to bitch about like a new light comes out and they want it but like we're very well we're very well equipped with yeah. with what we have so we have everything that you know almost everything that you know like you, know, you think of uh any of the top tier teams we're yeah. we're rolling with can you uh do you guys use any any whiz bang special ammo um nothing that's nothing like I mean, is it just green tip in your M4? Or oh, you? we're not using, no, we can't use a uh, green tip. Um, I think it's like a 62 grain. Um, is it a hollow point at least or an expanding? I can't remember what it is. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't nerd out on that stuff too yeah. much because I, I, I don't, um, I don't have a say in it. <laughs> yeah. Um, on your secondary, the, on the pistol, uh, you said a, f a few Glock, Glocks to choose from, which, which is your preference? Um, I think right now, right now I'm running a 47, which was a new yeah. design that they came out with for Border Patrol uh, a couple of years ago. Um, Is that a single stack nine mil or what? It's, it's kind of like a, it's no, it's a, it's a double stack. Um, but they, uh, it's, um, I don't know. It's kind of like a, a hybrid between, I think it was, I think it's kind of features of like a, uh, 17 and I forget what else, but it's, I mean, it's, it's nice. I, I'm thinking about going back to the 17 though. Yeah. Um, I mean, cause the 43 X, um, is, you know, is that newer subcompact single stack. I mean, I love that fucking gun. It's great. I mean, I wouldn't carry it in, in your capacity, but yeah. for a concealed civilian carry, it's a, it's a great, great platform. But, uh, do you guys, are you carrying just regular ball ammo for that? Or is there anything special? No, nah, that's a, I mean, we have a, a special ammo. I can't remember what exactly it is, but it's a form of hollow tip. I got gotcha. you. Um, in terms of actually, well, I guess before I ask this, um, night vision, you guys run run a yeah. lot of night vision stuff, I assume? Yeah. yeah. 
um, is most of the things that you do capability wise, you have to also be able to do it on nods. Yeah. That's a dual role kind of thing. Um, as far as, uh, any maritime stuff, like, do you guys have boat units and shit like that also, or, um, you know, not so much in Tucson, but, um, but yeah, the, uh, I think the San Diego guys work a lot with the team guys out there. I think a fair amount. Okay. Um, I, I know they've done some training uh, with them. They've done some training with the Coast Guard. Um, so I think they do uh, some maritime stuff out there. But we, some of the Texas units probably too with the Rio Grande. Yeah, I think they do some stuff on. The, I know they do some stuff on the river. I don't know how much they get on the boats or in you know in and around or any of that stuff. But um, they uh, yeah, we've just. We're, uh, we're expanding our capabilities as far as um, there's uh, got some uh, diving is now a, 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 a capability that we're really? getting into, which is we just got blessed for some guys for that. So, oh. I mean, can you talk about like what, what scenario would exist where you guys would need, need to be diving? Um, right now, um, right now, the capability would be for just assisting with recovery of stuff. Oh, okay. Um, or we, you know, um, hopefully in the future, you know, we can expand it into other capabilities that, you know, uh, more offensive. Yeah. You know, just preventative stuff and, you know, (laughs) you know, more useful stuff, but, uh, you know, that's, that's a pipe pipe dream at this point. You know, we, we did just stand up, uh, or the past, uh, year we've gotten, uh, our free fall, free fall capability is now a thing that, um, is kind of out now, which is pretty cool. cool. Our guys got their first, uh, our, uh, some of our guys got their first operational, uh, conus jump. Really? Yeah. Can you talk about the the circumstances where they did it? Um, I mean, I can kind of speak a little bit about it. I was, I was on I was in a support role for that as, as far as a QRF and, um, yeah, it was just, it was a, it was a reconnaissance type mission and, and, uh, just inserting, you know, at night, um, you know, uh, just from a aero platform and, uh, just jumping in and, you know, uh, making movement to a, a high spot and just doing some reconnaissance for a few days and, and then exfil. So, yeah. all right. Hey guys, I want to take a, a second to talk about ads. Um, and this is not an ad. This is me talking about the ads. I know that, um, you know, sometimes we get comments of, of people bitching about the ads. There's too many ads or they're too long or what have you. And I, I want to clear two things up, which is number one is that my slash our team's ability to bring you guests and, and bring them in and, and the accommodations and, and the entire process that it takes to produce these shows to the level with which we do uh, requires funding, you know, and the, the sponsors give us an ability to bring these shows to you. So while I understand that everybody wants zero ads and, and everything bunched together and, and what have you, this is how we, we bring this show to you. Uh, you know, we're a very small team. We're very fortunate to, to be able to do it, uh, but we do still have to, uh, to pay bills and, and bring that to you. So keep that in mind. That's the first point. And the second point is that I can assure you with 100% accuracy is that There is not a sponsor or a product that I talk about on here that isn't something that I use, okay, that that I either regularly use or always use or have used, and and I refuse to budge on that, okay? So we we get uh, offers for for sponsors regularly that, that get turned down because it's not stuff that I use or would use. So... Keep that in mind, uh, have a little bit of flexibility in terms of our ads and, and realize that they're products that I believe in, that I stand behind, and they're what, what make this show possible. So if you support these advertisers, these sponsors, that is supporting the show. Thank you. What are the two key components for canine success? That's effective training and proper nutrition. Fueled by Team Dog brings those two components to your family and best friend. The perfect nutritional balance that results in a higher mental acuity, energy, overall vitality, and even an improved appearance. Every product you will find in my company's store was born from the battlefield and not from the boardroom. Let my life's work help you become your dog's hero. Is there a lot of, and I know this is wading into the uh, operational security territory that maybe you're not comfortable with or allowed to, to speak to, but in terms of Bortax use um, kind of offensively to 
offensively slash preventative to where it's counter operations of, of anything that's going on. Is there a fair bit of that or, or is most of what you guys do more reactionary? Uh, like specifically, like, so like, you know, I guess the example that you just used, but let's say, you know, it's showing a presence or, uh, you know, actively going after, you know, entities that are trying to smuggle people or, or narcotics or, or whatever, like almost the way DEA or, you know, ATF or, you know, would go after groups that are moving. Like, is there any offensive means that way? Or is it more of a, Hey, we, you know, th th this person's doing this and we're going and responding. Yeah, no, there's, it's, that's a, that's a big component is, you know, uh, working with, uh, intelligence units to develop, um, I don't know, say I don't know if targets is the you know political uh, term, but um, yeah, yeah like we up. definitely have you know uh, the uh, the intel units that develop stuff uh, like a target debt, uh, and then you guys actually will go after we'll action that stuff. Yeah. So is the is the border the line of demarcation that way? Like, can you guys? I mean, maybe you can't even say. I mean, can you guys go across the border if it's in a capacity where? it's a chase or it's a, a maneuver of some sort. Um, yeah, I can't really get into that. Yeah. I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> no, I'm no. just kidding. No. Um, yeah, no, I know we're, we're kind of walking a fine line here, but to me it's fascinating. And I know, you know, for a lot of people, I mean, I would say for most people in this country, you know, the border is, is a, a hotbed topic. You know, there's people that are very passionate on both sides, but it's, it's something that's pretty prevalent in everybody's, you know, mind and life. I mean, if you think about the the numbers of people that have migrated across that that line over the last forty years, like it's fucking astounding. You know, yeah. um, and I know that there's not a, a single single fix to it, um, but um, all right. So, in in terms of the the way that you guys are used, have have you, I guess, personally been on um, oper an operation or multiple operations where you've actually gotten into gunfights? Um, gosh, I mean, I've, I've been in some instances where I've been shot at, but, uh, didn't have a shot to return. Um, and that was, that was early on, but, uh, in Bortac, I've, I haven't really had anything. We've had some real, you know, some really hairy, um, some close calls, but I haven't had anything that like big shootouts or anything like that. I've, I've responded to, um, some shootouts, you know, like, you know, some, uh, like rip crew on rip crew stuff that, um, that had happened. And then we took guys into custody that, you know, we fortunately showed up with enough force that they, they didn't choose that to be their day, yeah. you know, but, um, yeah, we, a lot of the guys, I mean, I wouldn't say a lot, but we have had our share of uh, instances, but I haven't been on any yeah. um, so th there, shootouts or anything like so that. So there are occurrences where, I mean, I can only assume it's probably cartel members or close proximity to where Border Patrol agents, specifically BORTAC guys and um, cartels are, are actually getting into gunfights. Does, does that happen? And so I'm sorry, back up. So, I mean, are, are there instances from, if I'm assuming correctly of what you're saying, is that there are instances in the last 15 years where BORTAC agents or Border Patrol agents and cartel members have actually gotten into, like, actual gunfights and it's not just a shot here or there? Um, you know, I can't, I can't speak to, you know, like who, who, you know, whether they're, you know, cartel or who they are, but... Um, we'll just say so. Yeah, I mean, there's else. been, there's been... Uh, instances we've had we've had some shootings and and whatnot that um, you know that there's anytime you mix you know money and drugs and trafficking and stuff there's going to be weapons and and with that you know there's going to have you know yeah. you're going to have instances but yeah there's been there's been instances with that and you know our team you know was involved with you know uh, Uvalde was a big thing where our team was kind of got thrust into the spotlight. Um, and then, yeah, cause wasn't it border patrol that actually finally went in? Is yeah. That, it, was, um, it wasn't the cops. It was Bortac guys that, yeah, I think, uh, it was, uh, it was a couple of my teammates. And then, um, I think there was, a I think a force, I'm 
think it was a poor star guy, maybe a sheriff or something like that. But. Yeah. Yeah. Have you talked to them uh, about that? Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything you can share from that? Um, I, I don't know what I can share on that. I, I know that's, um, you know, the, uh, my buddy that was, that did go in there. He's, he's an awesome, awesome dude. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's a bad, you know, he described that scene as just, I mean, just what we can imagine, but, yeah. um, just a, a bad, bad scene, man. Yeah. It's a unfortunate, you know, the, um, I don't know, I think a lot of, and this is just me speaking from my, my standpoint. Um, a lot of that is just, uh, evolved from what, you know, society is kind of, uh, kind of created over the years you know you take away take away funding from law enforcement you take away support of law enforcement and uh and then you um you know breed a uh, a workforce that you know um re, you know trains guys to like ask for permission to act before you know before they do what they know is right you know i mean um you get a lot of people standing around and, and waiting for, for some initiative instead of, you know, breeding that, that warrior mindset that, that we all know. And do you think some of that is selection? Um, cause to me, I, you know, like I, I don't want to be the, the armchair quarterback on the same token. Like I've been on a two way range before yeah. and I know I've been in situations that, that were dicey that way. Um, I just can't fucking imagine irrespective of what the protocol is, is that in that environment where you, where you know what's happening that you're like, Oh, I got to wait. Like there's, that's yeah. just not happening. I'm not, I'm not waiting. Yeah. No, you know? it's, you know, and I, I'm saying, man, I, I, I try not to armchair quarterback this stuff, but you know, it's, um, you know, you've got such a, such a different, um, such a wide array of, um, individuals in law enforcement, you know, you've yeah. got in, in training with different, agencies and stuff like that you see you know some guys that you know god they get i i was at a training thing actually he's here in dallas like years ago and and uh ran into a police officer and they're walking off the range and you know as uh as female she had one box of ammo you know i'm like i'm like uh you know i'm just curious but you know is that like training ammo or she goes, yeah, this is our allotment for, the, you know, that's what they, at the time, that's what she got for the year for practice. One box. And it's like, you know, you've got, you know, like you said, selection of individuals, but, you know, you get nowadays, man, like how many people want to be in law enforcement, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, I, it's a tough, tough road for yeah. sure because, I mean, between the, the lack of support, both, you know, institutionally, you know, whether it's from the, higher echelons of the government all the way down to the local municipality and funding to society and their lack of support in the, in the way that they view law enforcement uh, more so than they did 20 years ago. Like the, that lack of, of support, I, I have no doubt, you know, those two things combine. It's like, who would go do that? You know, like way less people than would have 20 years ago, you know, and also the type of person, you know, to that, to that selection point, it's, it's just a fucking bad, bad scenario all the way around. Um, I don't know what, what the, the right answer is, but, um, you, you mentioned boar star. I'm curious, uh, what is the difference between boar tag? Yeah. And boar so star? boar stars are, um, border as a boar patrol, there's search trauma and rescue. Um, and if you like in the military, uh, mindset, think like PJs, um, so they're going to be like your swift water rescue guys, your ropes guys, medical, heavy med, um, medical, and then, you know, like tracking and recovery uh, type guys. Okay. Um, they've got, I think they also have cadaver dogs and stuff like that. So yeah. they get tasked with a lot of recoveries and, um, God, they responding. To those stuff. guys rescue so many people in the desert. Like th that's, it goes so unnoticed. Um, yeah. But, you know, they're rescuing thousands of people, thousands oh, wow. of people a year. Wow. It's, it's, you know, of course, you know, that's not, doesn't, you know, grab the, uh, headlines. Yeah. But those guys, they do great work. Um, we attach a lot of their, um, paramedics. We've got one of their, uh, one of their really good paramedics in our team right now that he goes out on all our ops with us. Oh, okay. Do you know about how many of them there are? Man, I want to say a guy like Tucson's probably got like 50, maybe 50. 40 or 50. They've got, I mean, they've got. I've got more than, than we do, yeah. but 
Do you guys uh, bust their balls? It used to be, man. It used to be like really, really, you know, head button um, to a point where like, I, you know, you'd be in the gym, you'd be like, you know. Fuck that guy. Yeah, like you, <laughs> you know, you, but it used to be, you know, like a lot more, um, yeah, there used to be a lot of, you know, contention there. But yeah. now, I mean, now it's, you know, we're all the same, you know, we're very similar dudes, you know, yeah. and, and uh, you know, you have some guys that, you know, dual tab, they'll go over to that side of the house or they'll, you know, start there and come over. And, you know, some of, some of my best teammates in the past have actually come over from there. And, yeah. you know, so. Any uh, Bortac versus Borstar charity boxing events? <laughs> I think we'd win that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what is the what is the tack in Bortac? It's just, just tactical. tactical. Okay. Yeah, you gotta have tactical in it. So, anything, so right? star. Well, yeah. So <laughs> star is a is an acronym. Tack is just tactical. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. So yeah. so inconsistent, you Border Patrol guys. Yeah. Um. So all right. So um, your path, I guess you started out when you first started out. Um. Can you walk us through kind of your timeline of, of the, you know, 13 plus years that you've spent there? Yeah. So, so I started out in Calexico, um, as a line agent, um, sites set on Bortac. Uh, first chance I got for that, I, I went out for it. I went through selection, graduated in, what was it? 2009. Um, and, uh, <laughs> it's funny, man. Like, uh, you know, the, the Tucson team, they show up and they, you know, they're handing out, like they're giving their guys like, you know, you know, here's a knife, you know, congratulations, you made it. Here's a, here's a badass like, you know, like a Strider knife or something. I can't remember what, a really nice knife. And, you know, I'm sitting here, you know, like I graduated from Calexico and I didn't know it at the time when I was, you know, getting my, my ass kicked in selection. Um, but uh, they disbanded our team. Oh, really? So I get out and... Uh, yeah, I'm like, I get, you know, hit in the face with like, you're going back to the line. So I get back and, you know, go through graduation, get back to the line. And now you got like, you know, it's like with any special unit, you know, you got haters, um, you got people that, you know, support your unit. And then you have guys that, you know, some guys that failed or they just wanted, you. they didn't get selected or whatever. And, and so now they're, you know, they're the biggest haters. And I get back to my station and it's like a supervisor. He's like, so yeah, Schweitzer. Uh, Bortac, right? Yeah. It's like, well, you know, he's like, okay, well, you've got, you know, such and such duty. Um, take this old piece of shit ride that barely rides and uh, make sure you put on that tactical harness, you know, when you go out there and I'm like, all right, this, I got, <laughs> I'm not going to be able to deal with this, you know? Yeah. So, um, so a detail came up to Tucson, um, to come out here. They had, they were getting hit with some, some stuff and, uh, a lot of uh, bandit and rip crew activity and uh, stuff like that up in the mountains. So they they can you were, talk about what that is, bandit and rip crew? Uh, so that's you know it's just with the narcotics, you know, um, trafficking. Uh, they uh, you know just moving moving the drugs, armed armed uh, armed drug loads, and then you'd have other other uh, entities, you know, working for other plazas or you know whatever. Um, find out where those uh, routes are and they're basically setting up interdictions, you know, and, uh, and, uh, so one of our big taskings was to address that, you know, to make that, you know, the, the area, you know, the AOR safer for everybody. I mean, safer for, you know, us citizens and, and frankly, you know, safer for, you know, illegals that are crossing, you know, just not getting caught in the middle of all that stuff. So, um, that's something that we were, we were tasked with. Um, and that was back in like 2010. Um, so I came out here on a three month detail and, uh, and then, um, and that's when, uh, one of my, my classmates was, was shot and killed on Brian Terry. Yeah. Yeah. So he was, he was a classmate of yours. Yeah. He was wow. my Bortac classmate. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, can you, Tell us that story. Like, were you were you there when that happened, or you you came over because of that? I, w I so I was on that detail. I, was, I worked on that op. Um, there was an ongoing op for that spanned a period of time. But um, the night that that happened, I I had already returned home. I was on I was on the rotation prior to that. So I was I was down there uh, working that. But but I had I had fulfilled my my period of time there, and I was I was back home. Uh, at that point in Calexico, and I got the call at like, like two in the morning. I had somebody, 
another classmate that was working overheard the radio traffic and called me to see if I was all right. Um, cause they knew I'd been there on detail. And that's when I, I remember that, you know, the phone call and getting, uh, just getting waking up and, you know, I was just like, fuck man. You know, like I, I didn't, at that point I didn't know who, it, who it was. You know, I just knew they just said that, yeah, Hey, I just heard that. Like, you know, I knew you were out here. I heard that, you know, somebody, uh, that you guys got in a firefight and, uh, and somebody, somebody didn't make it. And, uh, so, um, yeah, so that was tough. Yeah. Um, and that's, that did kind of factor into, um, you know, my team, my team had been disbanded, but then they, they stood it back up. But at that point in time, I was like, man, I, I, that's where, you know, I was like, I want to go to Tucson, yeah. you know? Do, do you know, uh, like the circumstances of how, how that happened or what happened? Like, it, cause it seemed like there was kind of some almost controversy surrounding or, or swirling around what happened, what didn't happen, what was being released versus not. And it seemed like it kind of turned into a shit show, didn't it? Yeah. It's, um, I don't know what I can actually dive into. Um, I can say that, you know, that there's a ton of conspiracies out there over it. And, and, and it's, and, and it, that happens with, you know, any agency, you know, government agency and any, any shooting, um, that, that isn't like that they don't throw the facts out there right out of the gate and stuff. It allows all the, the, uh, people with their foil hats to formulate their own, uh, opinions and then yeah. stuff just starts bouncing around. But I mean, I can, I can say that, you know, it's, it wasn't any, there was no crazy conspiracy. There was no crazy anything. Um, it was just a, you know, it's a, it was a, it's a dangerous freaking job that we do. And, uh, you know, it could have been any one of us that night. Um, it was just, uh, it was a unlucky shot, um, by, by the, the shithead that was carrying a, an AK, you know, yeah. um, and he, it wasn't like a, it wasn't a well-aimed shot. He, he just, you know, Got basically lucky. like a spray and pray in general direction. And, um, all right guys, as you know, I'm into uh, health and fitness, uh, and specifically how nutrition relates to it. Um, coffee is a, has been a staple of mine and, and I think most people's for a long time. Um, as you know, I'm a big uh, proponent of Mudwater, which is a sponsor of this show. They have been uh, for a while now and, and we have a great partnership I love their product. Um, it's a phenomenal alternative to coffee. Um, for me, you know, coffee, there's jitters, there's mold in it. Uh, you know, a lot of times it tends to, to kind of upset my stomach. Uh, but Mudwater has adaptogenic uh, mushrooms. Um, there's a fraction of the caffeine that coffee has. There's a little bit, but it's very, very little. Um, and it, it really leans on, on mushrooms and the blend of matcha and chai for kind of that sustained energy that that continues to go and, and doesn't crash the way coffee does when uh, when it runs out. Uh, they use lion's mane for alertness, cordyceps to support physical performance, chaga and raishi to support the immune system, turmeric for soreness, and cinnamon for antioxidants. Um, I, I really enjoy that first cup of warm liquid in the morning by taking mud water instead of coffee, and I'll put uh, just a splash of, of heavy cream uh, or even some protein powder, uh, some collagen powder. Um, and I also throw, uh, usually a couple drops of, uh, stevia or, uh, monk fruit vanilla to make it kind of a, a thick normal morning coffee ritual type of, uh, concoction. And, uh, I gotta tell you, it, it, it does wonders for me. And, and I'm really, really glad that I switched. It's been, you know, better part of a year now, uh, you know, that I've been taking that uh, and using that as part of my uh, daily morning routine. And it's fantastic. I love it. I, I can't re recommend it enough. Uh, it's hundred percent USDA, uh, organic, non GMO, gluten-free, vegan, and kosher certified. Uh, and they also donate to the Berkeley center for science of psychedelics, which is, uh, you know, groundbreaking and leading research to help veterans with PTSD, uh, and other, uh, associated illnesses and, and, uh, syndrome. So, uh, great cause, great company, phenomenal product. If you go to Mudwater, that's M U D W T R dot com forward slash Mike to su support this show and the product, uh, and use the code Mike Mud, M I K E M U D all caps for fifteen percent off. That's again Mudwater M U D W T R dot com forward slash Mike, and the code is Mike Mud M I K E M U D all caps for fifteen percent off. Go check them out. 
Hey guys, I wanted to uh, talk about something that I've incorporated into my daily routine, my morning routine that has had a remarkable impact on my life. Uh, it's called BioPro Plus. Uh, it's a non-synthetic HGH uh, treatment. And, uh, you know, every year after puberty, your HGH levels naturally drop uh, and exponentially sometimes uh, can even drop by, by 50% by the time you're 35 uh, I train jujitsu three or four times a week. I lift three or four times a week. And BioPro Plus, uh, without question, uh, enhances my ability to train more uh, days per week, harder, recover faster, uh, enhance performance. I cannot say enough good things about this product. I've been taking it for a few months. Uh, it's, it's remarkable, and I will continue to, to do so. Um, if you want to, uh, you know, perform better, look better, feel better. Uh, I, I can't stress it enough. I, I've tried BioPro Plus, uh, and I encourage you to go to bioproteintech.com. Uh, and if you want to get $30 off your first order, use the code MikeDrop, M-I-K-E-D-R-O-P. And again, that's bioproteintech.com. I cannot stress enough. This stuff has uh, been a game changer for me as I've gotten older. Can you speak to, I guess, just the the general circumstance with which yeah, like w w were were your guys responding to something and they were fighting back, or like can, can you kind of give us the the general purpose? Yeah, I, I mean, I think I think I can. Um, yeah, we it was you know we we had seen you know there was an area where um, yeah, these guys had just been running wild, uh, going through um, you know, smuggling narcotics and and uh, it was armed, and that's what kind of kind of got us thrust down there and it became a priority because of the risk of, you know, there's, you know, civilians that work or that, that hunt down in that area. There's civilians that, you know, hike and bird watchers and all kinds of stuff. And then, you know, you've got the alien traffic as well. So we got thrust down there as basically like, Hey, we need, this needs to be addressed. So it, it had, we were down there working for, it was over a month, you know, just basic traditional, um, you know, um, uh, reconnaissance and and uh, like an interdiction team uh, set up around the clock for about a month just waiting um, and uh, yeah so and that night you know uh, guys were it was a change of uh, shift so shift change guys were one team was infilling as as these guys were packing up and getting ready to pack or to to get out of their their rotation and and uh one of my teammates was, you know, like, hey, you know, hey, I think I, I think I see someone coming down the trail. Oh shit, he's got, you know, he's got a weapon. Um, and then those, you know, quickly, you know, things shifted to, you know, focus on that. And then, you know, firefight ensues, and, and Brian gets hit. Um, I think he got hit uh, low in the low in the back. I think uh, through the spine, and um, it was pretty quick, you know. Um, a team coming in heard uh, heard the comms and everything, and they got in. Uh, one of the I want to say one of the one of the shitheads was uh, had been hit. He was laying down in the the wash, so he was apprehended. Thankfully, um, the other ones fled. Uh, they searched the team coming in. You know, of course, tended to Brian. Uh, guys carried him out in that terrain, man. Like, yeah. think Afghanistan. You know, um, yeah. through the mountains. Um, so they they exfilled him. Uh, he's he was already you know uh, gone by that time. But they uh, spent the next I think like forty eight hours searching for the other guys. And um, you know over time you know they made it back. I don't think they got anybody else else that night. But um, over the last whatever it's been what's twenty three or thirteen years, um, you know they've. they've caught the other guys and and prosecuted i think they just la uh, prosecuted the last guy do you know how many there were God, i think it was five or six i can't remember for sure but i think it was five or six um but they just prosecuted the last guy i think he was sentenced like six months ago or something like that yeah uh i'm assuming here right yeah yeah did they actually catch the guy that they know did it for sure um, I think they know, I think they, I think they knew who the gunman was. Yeah. I, I can't remember what he got, but I know that since he was extradited from Mexico, they, he couldn't get the death penalty. I think oh, he okay. got like, I, I can't speak. 800 years there. in prison or yeah, something, something like that. Yeah. Man. I, I mean, thinking of it as an outsider looking in of, of trying to put myself in 
um, traffickers' shoes, it, it would seem to be a, a, a foolish protocol to, I mean, I, I can see wanting to be armed to protect yourself from, you know, a, a competition or fucking wildlife, I mean, whatever, but to me, that, that's a, f- a real fine line and a dicey thing to fuck with you guys, right? Because, I mean, I, I guess, does it, do you get that impression that, that they're almost like a, there's a standing order from the top of, of the, we'll call them the opposition, um, to try not to fuck with you guys because the there has to be a, a certain point where you're you're kicking the hornet's nest over and now you're going to make your job way more difficult. I, I think that there's, you know, and I think there's definitely, you know, I think there, and I'm speaking just personally, I think that there's, uh, um, I think there's some sense of that, you know, and, you know, because God, if they, if they wanted to, you know, yeah, they could definitely be shooting it out a lot and stuff, but it'd bring a lot more attention to them. And then it just make their, their jobs a lot more difficult. Um, and the last thing they want is a lot of attention, you know? So yeah. I think there is some of that. I also think that they probably use, you know, some of those tactics to, you know, uh, hype up other areas for their rival, you know, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, like bait and yeah. like make one spot hot so they can draw attention. Well, make, to- make, a rival area is hot, oh, you gotcha. know, so. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, you know, I don't know. I yeah. just, well, there's, it's like, there's so much of that. There's, and that's one thing that I, I always, I always like talking to people that we catch because I'm, you know, I'm so, I'm personally intrigued by it. Not, not even from an operational standpoint, but it's interesting. Like yeah. all the crazy behind the scenes stuff that we don't know, we don't deal with. We don't, it, you know, it's just interest. It's always interested me. You know, we're just, you know, a lot of the times we don't, when we catch people, you don't even know, like we don't, you know, you're on to the next target, you know, a lot of times. So you is, don't really know the end outcome of a lot of the stuff. Yeah. Is there a, an example or two of super interesting or fascinating things that you've learned from talking with people that you've caught? Um, God, I think, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Um, is there anything that's, uh, that shocked you? Um, is, there, is there a situation you've come into that you're just like, holy fuck, like it, it was just shocking? Not really. I mean, it's I, I'd have to actually sit down and think about that. There's, um, yeah, nothing off the top of my head, man. I, I know that, you know, some of these people are, um, you know, it's different levels of people that we deal with. But, you know, some, I think there's, I think there's some people that, that you know, they tell them, you know, like, Hey, take, take this, you know, this product. And, you know, like they might just take a random dude that may not even work for somebody and, you know, um, send them, you know, with Hey, if you get this across, we're going to waive this fee or something like that. But yeah, yeah. I can't think of anything off the top of my head, man. Honestly, from a, like a, a human atrocity standpoint, have you guys run into things that, that, kind of made your stomach turn that way? Like, is there just some gnarly shit that you've encountered? A lot of it, man. There's, 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 it's a big desert. And, you know, we, we've, you know, aside from all that, like, aside from just dealing with the, the, just the day to day, like just crappy people that we deal with a lot, you know, um, there's a lot of good people. Um, and you know, like Mexican citizens or uh, Guatemalans or whatever coming across, like you look at them and you're like, that is, they're, they're a good person, you know, like that is a good person that's really legitimately trying to make it better for their kids, better for, you know, like they're not all, you know, the, uh, the evil criminals that, that we deal with a lot. Um, so coming across some of them that are in distress and they've got their kids with them and, and, you know, or, you know, people taken, you know, down to, you know, some of the people we've come across in the desert that, you know, it's like this guy, if we wouldn't have found him like in the middle of nowhere, if we wouldn't have found this dude, he's gone. Like he's gone. Like we've, you know, and that's just, you know, us just stumbling on people by, by chance or, or, you know, like a nine one one call or something like that. But, uh, you know, you see so much of it and that's not even our real mission. You know, poor stars primarily, going out there doing all the rescue calls but you know we've come across quite a few and and you come across you know several that that haven't made it you know they expired you know a couple hours before you got there and you see them and you're just like damn dude like that's real (laughs) i'm assuming it's usually a combination of heat stroke and dehydration 
Yeah, mostly. You know, a lot of a lot of them or or they'll break an ankle, um, something like that. You know, going through rugged terrain at night, they'll break an ankle, fall behind the group, and the the, the guy just leaves them behind, and oh. and then they're stuck there. The cell phone goes dead, and you know they're just shit out of luck. Yeah, I'm surprised at how many still make it though. Honestly, yeah. like like, I mean, it's 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 shocking. Do you guys have a sense for um, the percentage of? I guess the term they use is gotaways. Like, I have no any clue. idea. No, no idea. clue. Same with narcotics. I mean, it's it's like, gonna, it's gonna. You ask one person, they're gonna give you one number. You ask another, it's gonna be yeah. another. It's really, I mean, like I say, it's such a big desert, and yeah. you know, um, for us, you know, for us and our team, like we just, I, I don't, I quit worrying about all that stuff like years ago because I'm like, you know, I couldn't, you know, I saw how inaccurate a lot of the stuff reported was and then also like all i can do you know i'm dealing with so much stuff all i can deal with or all i can do is what um what my task is what my what my job is if my job is to you know move to this point and interdict these people then you know that's that's kind of what i focus on and and i i don't really get wrapped around the politics or the numbers or yeah anything like that because it'll it'll drive you freaking you know in this line of work it'll drive you crazy you know, I, I guess the one of the things I'm curious about is like from a from an interaction standpoint. I know I asked about kind of their their protocols, but on your guys's end, um, and I know some of this is going to be kind of sensitive, but I've got you know kind of a list of like what ifs almost, or like in a, in certain scenarios where you know your your protocols for processing people. Like from from a legality standpoint, what does that look like? Because that's one thing that seems like it doesn't really get talked a lot about, um, and it's something that seems pretty ambiguous that a lot of people like. I don't even know if somebody comes here illegally. Like, what do you do with them? Like, what what happens to them? What like what what are their rights or not? Or like, what does that look like? Yeah. Um, I as far as are you talking about like as fi- like physical processing? Yeah. Like what we we I encounter you know some just random person out in the desert. Yeah. Um, for us, I mean, for us, you know, um, we'll typically, you know, we'll just, you know, a lot of them, they're not, you know, at this point, the way things are, you know, they're not, a lot of them aren't running from you or anything like that. And in fact, you know, where we, where we work, you know, it's so desolate and everything that, you know, a lot of the stuff we do, it's more of a rescue. You know, you're, you're finding people out there that, you know, they've lot been separated from groups and, you know, they're stranded out there and they can't even see, civil, you know, there's no civilization, civilization in sight, but, um, now you're just, I mean, you're taking them, taking them into custody, you know, women and children, you're just kind of corralling them up and, you know, then you call a supporting unit and they come and get them. And what happens to them after that? They just go to a processing center, you know, a processing center. And then they do, you know, their run checks on them and stuff like that. But, and I mean, so depending on what comes back, I suppose is what dictates what what you guys do with them. Um, yeah, I don't get into. I, I don't really do a lot. Of, I don't, we don't do a lot of processing, so yeah. I can't. I hate to go diving down that hole. I got gotcha. you. Uh, what would you say the biggest problems for you guys are? Like, what are what are your biggest challenges? Your unit. Oh man, for us, I mean, yeah, of course, funding is always. You know, that's always a. You know, an item, but, um, challenges is got manpower, you know, manpower is always huge. Uh, and then, um, just the politics of stuff, you know, it's, you know, what we, you know, we're, uh, what we're able to do and stuff like that. But um, is, is there a, a thing that you're not allowed to do that you wish you were that, that most guys like wish that this wasn't the case? Um, I'm, I'm sure there are, you know, <laughs> anything for you personally. Um, you know, uh, no, not, not that you, not, not that, that you'd admit to. Not that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, there's things that would definitely make the job easier, but you know, because of, you know, um, uh, you know, law and stuff like that. Yeah. Who's your favorite politician? Favorite politician living or, or dead? I mean, current, um, 
God, can I say, I'd say none of them. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, say, I, I can't disagree with that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, well, yeah. I mean, so in that same kind of vein, like how is the, the morale seems like that's a fucking challenge for you guys. Right. I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely a roller coaster ride, you know, different administrations, you know, and it's like, you know, you'd like to say some administrations are like, oh man, this is awesome. But every, every administration that I've worked under has still had its challenges, whether it be, you know, one thing or another. Um, it's, it's just a, it's just a challenging freaking mission and, and job. And, um, you know, so it, it's been better for, you know, under certain administrations and it's been extremely challenging other under others, you yeah. know? Um, I wonder which ones those are. I don't know, man. Yeah. I think most of your you listeners could probably piece those yeah. together, but I mean, do they talk to you guys about kind of towing the fucking company line that way? I mean, of saying like, Hey, don't get into political discussions. Don't say you like somebody or don't like them. Like uh, how, yeah, uh, you, how involved like, are they in your guys's? You, well, I mean, we can't, we can't do like, you can't, you can't go there on any of that stuff. Really? Um, yeah. Um, especially, you know, like on the record, stuff like that, what you do on your own time. Yeah. Um, and not representing the agency is another thing. But um, what about like on social media? Like if, if you posted something on your social media, is that a gray area? Or um, they, they if there's a, if there's now if there's if there's no association, if somebody can't associate your your name back to the agency, then yeah, what you do is pretty. If it can't be tracked back to that, then you're you're probably good to go. But um, you know, uh, I know some guys that that have some pages that that work for the agency that are, are pretty, pretty vocal about issues and stuff like that. And, um, they seem good to go with it, but, uh, you know, anytime you're representing the agency, you know, in any type of fashion or can be perceived as representing the, in, in, uh, the agency, you can't speak, yeah. you know, on that stuff. So yeah. I'm always, you know, with being somewhat, you know, in the spotlight, you know, from here, you know, from time to time, I, I always steer away from it. I mean, I think most people, you know, in our, in our, you know, world and, you know, people that we deal with probably know where most of us stand, you know? So, yeah. yeah. Um, do you come across guys within the units that have a, a polar opposite political <laughs> viewpoint? Cause you guys um, have to talk about that shit, right? Yeah, man. There's only one dude that stands out that you haze the shit out of him. Don't that you? we, I mean, he was one of our new dudes and we just joked about it. You know, this was a couple, uh, couple elections ago and, uh, man, he was voting for, you know, to make history and, you know, he made history and, and then we just, you know, he caught a lot of crap, yeah. you know, he caught a ton of crap. Yeah. Um, it was funny true. though. Yeah, but, I mean, I don't think his one vote really swayed anything. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Um, one thing I'm curious of, and I know this doesn't apply maybe directly to the unit that you're in, but on a broader scope, like the bum rush scenario, like some of the, sometimes you see these groups of caravans of like thousands of people, and d does Border Patrol have a a policy or a, a mitigation plan of some sort that if there's 5,000 people that just come across at once and, and overrun an area, like, is there a, a standing order of this is what we're going to do, or this is how we handle it? And, um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's a scenario they're, they're dealing with uh, hot and heavy right now. Well, um, what the fuck do you do it? Like at, at, at some point there has to be a like, okay, this is a fucking an act of war. I mean, really, like if, uh, like if there's 20,000 people that are, let's say they're armed, like let's, let's go down that fucking rabbit hole of like, a, is there a fucking line? Yeah, like, if, there, if, there was say, an, if there was an armed, you know, if there was a bunch of armed, you know, if a, a large number of armed people like that, then that's, you know, that's a, that's different than what we're dealing with now. Now we're not dealing, you know, everybody's not armed, but um, yeah, it's, it's all, I've often wondered, like, you know, it's like, you know, at what, like, where is that line between, uh, you know, hey, this is just immigration, and then, hey, this is like, uh, you know, like an assault on, you know. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, so the short answer is, like, that hasn't been directed to you guys? Like, that, hey, that, whether it's a number or whatever, that there's not boxes that, if these boxes are checked, you are to respond in this way. Like, do, are they that specific? Not that, I mean, maybe you can't share it and I get why you couldn't, but is, is there a plan? Um, you know, I can't, I, I wouldn't really dive into that. Um, 
I know that like for us, you know, we deal with mostly high ri- the high risk stuff. So anything armed, you know, we're definitely, we definitely be responding to, um, any special circumstances we would, we would be addressing it. Yeah. Um, you know, but as far as like the tactics or, or, you know, like what criteria initially, you know, spins that up, I'd, I'd hate to dive into that. I mean, can, can you at least say that there is a protocol or there isn't for like my team to respond specifically no, like, or like the, the overarching scope of the entire customs and border patrol, like, I'll give you a hypothetical is that, you know, we'll say at the, at your sector, let's say that there's 25,000 unarmed, but non-compliant, non-violent, but non-compliant people that are just streaming across. Like, is, is there a point at which that our, our government via the border patrol would say, figure out a way to stop this at whatever fucking cost? Well, I think that's, I think that's what they're, they're figuring out now, you know, um, as far as what, you know, upstairs, what their um, strategies or, or uh, you know, their, their, their means or what, you know, what their, yeah, what, I guess what their strategies are and stuff like that. I, I couldn't speak to that, but. Yeah. Um, Do you know anybody that could? Probably. That, that would come <laughs> on here and talk about it? I don't know, man. I don't know. Possibly. Because, I mean, to me, it's like I, I get the not wanting to delve into the, into the politics. I mean, it's the same way in the military. To me, th- this is a separate issue, though. You know, this is, yeah. I mean, it, it's American sovereignty where it's like, you know, an organization whose task is to maintain integrity of the border should have a fucking answer for that. Right. You know, like that. not, a, oh, we can't talk about that. It's like. That's your fucking job. Like yeah. you, you should, and you, you have to talk about that. Like, you know, the American people deserve to know what your fucking plan is. If 30,000 people just start coming across, I mean, at a hundred thousand, a fucking half a million, a million, like yeah. at, at what point are you going to be like, okay, we've got to do something to stop this. And, and I mean, th- these are uncomfortable conversations that I know most people in those positions don't want to have to have answers to because those answers either scare or piss a lot of people off or some people. Yeah. But the reality of it is, is that, you know, that, that scenario, I mean, it, you see glimpses or pockets of that already happening. And it's like, what the fuck are you doing about it? You know, I mean, like there has to come a a point at which you're going to say, okay, enough is enough. Like this number is too fucking many and and we've got to fucking do something. Yeah. No, I think, I think with this, uh, this, this big push that they've had, know over the last what month or you know a couple months i mean um i think it's really you know it's been it's an eye opener i think for them you know they've they've really been kind of scrambling because it's you know i mean we see you see the news and you know i don't watch much news at all but you know from what i have seen it's like you see the thousands and thousands and thousands and yeah i mean you know there's a lot of stuff that i don't i mean we don't you know, us, we kind of live in our little operational bubble where we, you know, we stay so busy with the stuff that we're doing that we don't, um, we don't deal with the day-to-day stuff. Um, but I can say that, you know, from time to time, we do get retasked with stuff that's not necessarily in our a high-risk mission to help, you know, they'll scramble us to, hey, help here, help there to, yeah. you know, to, to, I think, you know, kind of help with that stuff. But yeah. Um, yeah, I wish there was like a, a good yeah. answer or solution for that. But yeah. I want to take a second to talk about something near and dear to my heart. And that is a staunch supporter of this podcast, which is Bub's Naturals. Uh, the hat sitting in front of me uh, here on our coffee table here in the studio belonged to Glenn Doherty. His nickname was Bub. Uh, I did two platoons with him. And his childhood best friend uh, and another colleague of theirs, uh, Sean is the best friend, TJ is their colleague, uh, started Bub's Naturals, which is a collagen and MCT oil company uh, in Bub's or Glenn's honor. And, um, you know, for me, it's it's uh, an absolute honor to be sponsored by and working with a company that, um, you know, was started in the honor of one of my closest friends and, and a guy that I went to war with. And, uh, you know, the, the Bubs brand is not only super quality, um, you know, 
collagen, uh, collagen powder as well as MCT oil powder. Um, you know, but they also give back to the Glenn Doherty Memorial Foundation. Uh, they donate proceeds from their product sales to the Glenn Doherty Memorial Foundation, which, uh, you know, to me just furthers, uh, you know, the, the mission set on Veterans Day. They give 100% back. So uh, I do believe it's the best collagen on the planet. Uh, I like to mix it in with uh, morning coffee. The MCT oil powder, the same thing. Uh, it mixes in very easy. It tastes great. Uh, and it just kind of adds everything that you want to start your day off from a brain health standpoint, from a joint support, gut support, um, you know, MCT oil and collagen are, are two components, especially as, as we age, uh, that are integral components to, uh, to health. And so, uh, to be able to work with Bubs Naturals and, uh, be able to, to work with them and, and sponsor a product that, uh, number one is a high quality product. And number two is, is so near and dear to, uh, you know, to my heart and to the mic drop podcast for, for who it, uh, was started for and what it stands for. Um, you know, it's just, uh, it's an amazing, amazing place to be. So, um, it is whole 30 approved. Um, it's, uh, sport certified, so you're not uh, going to run into any problems with that. Um, and I will say that, um, you know, right now they're, they're offering, uh, 20%, <clears throat> 20% off if you go to bubsnaturals.com and, uh, use the mic drop code. So, uh, I really highly encourage you to, to try it out, incorporate it into your day, day to day for joint health, for brain health, uh, for cognition, for gut health. And, uh, and to support an amazing organization that does a lot of things uh, in Glenn Bub's honor. So uh, go to bubsnaturals.com. Mic drop is the code 20% off. Um, has there been a, a biggest bust that you've been a part of, like whether it's amount of drugs or people or like a thing that stands out as being like a, a mission or oper excuse me, operation that you went on that uh, was the most notable? Man, um... God, there's a, I mean, there's a, there's, they all just kind of blend together. Um, but, um, I can't think of, I would say there was one, uh, years ago, uh, we had just wrapped up a, there was a weapons deal. There were some people taking weapons south. Uh, we were, we were on that. And then, uh, and that was, that was kind of in a urban setting. We we're set up for that. And uh, and then uh, we got spun up. We got a call um, that some people were being held against their will up in the mountains by one of these rip crews. Um, so basically, you know, what was happening was, you know, uh, these guys were up in the mountains. They had apprehended a group of just aliens, um, and they were holding them basically for ransom, you know, like making them call back to Mexico and, like, Western Union uh thousands of dollars before they'd be released. Um, so we, we scrambled to the, to the airstrip and, uh, hopped in the Hawk. I think it was probably uh, maybe 11, 12 o'clock at night. Um, hopped on the Hawk and I think there's six of us. Um, we had ISR overhead, had, had them pinpointed up on this mountaintop and, uh, had some really good pilots that night, took us in, you know, low and then just popped up. Uh, just offset, you know, maybe 40 yards, and they had already released the um, the aliens. They had released them barefoot, and they walked off the mountain. Um, but uh, we got there, got the dudes, um, recovered the weapons. A uh, couple of guys ran, and these guys, man, like they'll run and just jump off cliffs. They'll jump off, and you'll just see them. You know, we'll, we'll watch it back, you know, play it back from the ISR feed, and you just see them just tumbling, just tumbling down cliffs get up, continue running. Jesus. And it's like, one of us does that, dude. We're like dead or, you know, or worse, you know, yeah. like really fucked up. But Like fucking mountain sheep. Oh like yeah, the, they're like little, you know, mountain goats and Sherpas or whatever. But yeah, they, we eventually got them all. Um, were there, and, were any of them severely injured from those falls? Ah, they're just, I mean, they were kind of jacked up, up, but nothing like crazy. God, that's crazy. Um, but uh, got them back and uh, they ended up, tracking down the aliens that they had been holding and one of the aliens identified the uh one of the guys we caught by the shoes that he was wearing really? he, he was he had taken this guy's you know fake jordans or whatever <laughs> and he and the, the the guy was wearing them and so that's that was oh, one wow. of the 
key pieces yeah. of evidence or whatever. But so in cases like that, where they're like actual bad guys that you guys wrap up, I mean, do they get processed differently? I'm assuming and charged and, or do they just fucking deport them or what? Like, no, nah, they're t most of them, you know, like stuff like that. I wish I knew more as far as like, like a lot of times we don't get to see like the fruits of our labor. We don't get to see it through to see like, you know, how, how many years this guy got or where he landed or, you know, anything like that. But I know those guys got several years. I want to yeah. say at least, I want to say one of them got like 40 years, something like oh, that wow. years. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd be curious. You, you probably, I'm assuming you wouldn't know the answer if, if you don't get the, the wrap up, but, um, one, you know, whatever their sentence is when that's done, then what do they do with them? Like, I, I would hope they don't. No, nah, they would just get deported then yeah. at that point if they're illegal. Yeah. Wow. That's fascinating shit. Um, have you ever gotten into, into any actual fights with any guys in all your time there? Like, have anybody put up, like, fist fights and, and you had to beat somebody's ass or, or get into it where you have your hands full or anything? What? I mean... You know, there's been a lot of good tackles, a lot of good, you know, body checks and stuff like that. But I think I've, you know, I don't know, being one of the bigger guys, I think that I don't, you know, I haven't had anybody really. Is, is that um, common or, or is it usually like once you're at that point, they're like, fuck, we're caught. And there's no, no sense in fighting. Uh, there's, well, I guess, I guess there was one dude. There was a dude. Um, he was, yeah, that was, uh, he was, I think he was Guatemalan. Um, but he was he was fighting with one of my teammates on a mountaintop, and I came over and assisted with that. And that dude was throwing blows, but you know there were two or three of us that quickly um, took him into custody. And yeah, he, uh, I mean, he was tweak. He had to have been tweaking on something. Um, yeah. we we're kind of, you know, um, just kind of holding him down and stuff like that. And that dude was, I mean, he was. I've never seen a guy fight like that. But really. Yeah, he didn't get any good blows in or anything, but he Just was my up. buddy was going good on him, and I looked over and heard him, you know, and we went over and uh, took care of him. But do you guys train uh, combatives much? Um, we do some some guys more than others, but yeah. um, we do um, a fair amount of of combatives. Um, in fact, we had ta I'd talked to some of your guys uh, down in Coronado about getting into some of the classes down there. I know some of our guys have been through some yeah. stuff. But oh, okay. Um, yeah, we do some guys, a lot of guys are, a couple of my teammates are huge in jujitsu and, um, I used two years ago when I was in Japan, I, I was kind of heavy in it and, and, um, but we, we try to do that, you know, do some training stuff in kit and everything just yeah. to, for that. Yeah. Um, what's the age requirement? Uh, or, or what's the maximum age to try out for boar tack and boar stuff? You're looking at my gray hair and like that question came up. Huh? <laughs> I mean, look at my fucking, I've got just as much and I have no you're fucking like how, hair, You're so. like, how many, how many years do you got left, man? Well, no, I, no, I mean for, for a guy that wants to start out, yeah. like what's the limit? No, there's no, there's no age limit. Really? really? Um, there's not. I mean, we've got dudes that, God, I've got, I've had dudes on my team young enough to be my kid, uh -huh. you know? Um, what's the oldest guy you've seen come through? Oldest? I want to say that. We Anybody had, in their forties? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We had, you know, I like Brian. Brian when he went through, God, what was I? I was, yeah. I, I want to say he was forty something. We've had a couple other dudes. We had an SF dude that came through. He was, he was, I think, maybe mid forties, forty four, forty five. Going through the selection. Yeah. Wow. And they made it. Yeah. No oh, shit. There's hope yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, just in the window. Uh, man, that's fucking wild. Uh, Anything that I haven't asked you about uh, Bortac that uh, that's relevant? Um, man, no. I mean, I, in the last couple of years, man, they've you know the with the the jump program that's been a huge a huge huge thing for us, and they're they're really pushing that. Um, so I know that's one thing that our our team is really proud of. But um, no, it's it's you know it's we've always kind of struggled with recruiting. Um, because there hasn't been a lot out there and there haven't, you know, people don't talk uh, openly about um, stuff like that. So I, I really appreciate the opportunity to come on here and talk about this. Oh, yeah. I, I know it's, it's uh, big for us because, you know, a lot of the guys that we try to get are, you know, guys like, you know, your listeners. So guys with, uh, you know, military or uh, law enforcement background, um, you know, it's just getting out there and getting the word out, you know, and, 
um, kind of the process and stuff like that, yeah. you know, so. Is there a cap? Uh, I mean, I know recruiting is like they're pushing. Are they trying to get X number of guys or like, is there a, hey, we don't want over 400 or. That's never been a problem. I yeah. mean, we've never, we've never been. At uh, max cap. No. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, like the attrition rate and stuff like that, trying to get guys um, certified and, and everything like We've never, yeah. we've never come to that. So, is there special duty pay uh, above and beyond? Like, do you guys get bonuses or anything like that for doing it? There's, you know, so it, that's one thing that I've, I've always kind of uh, bitched about. Yeah, I mean, it's you can say it. Yeah, I mean, because it's like there should be. I mean, it's yeah, like but, special duty pay. I mean, like I get breacher pay. Um, you know, has duty pay for breaching. So anytime I have charges or something like that, you know, on opt and. You know, I get, it's next to nothing, man. Yeah. It's like, you know, I've just bought my breakfast for the morning, you know, yeah. but, um, we used to get has duty for every time that we flew. And then we started flying so frequently that that kind of, like, uh, became, you know, uh, not a thing anymore. Yeah, it's um, too expensive, but yeah, man, I'm, you know, it's, you know, I, it, there was talk at one time about getting guys a higher pay grade. So like, Hey, you've, you went through all this, you're assuming, you know, this added risk and, and you're, and we're getting you all this training and you're, and you're required to maintain this physical standard. You're required to maintain all these other skill sets that are, you know, just, you know, it's more capabilities, but with more capabilities comes more liabilities to you as a individual as well. So, um, getting compensated for that, you know, we've, we've kind of struggled that, you know, for that, but, um, Right now, it's just the has duty for for certain operations. I mean, to me, like from a recruiting challenge standpoint, that that would be the first fucking thing I would do is say like, hey, if you if you make it, you get a ten thousand dollar bonus and a, a a bump up in pay grade and an extra six hundred bucks a month. I mean, like something like that yeah. that's fucking tangible that actually makes a difference. Yeah, you know, uh, I mean, shit, they do it in the military. Um, you know, I mean, to me, it seems crazy that they don't have something like that. It's like, well, no wonder, you know, because notoriety and the and the aura of having the tab or whatever only goes so far. You know? and, yeah, I mean, that's that's cool. Like the first year, yeah. you know, when you're, you know, but and when your hips fucked up and your knees are blown out and, you know, like, yeah, there's got to be some some kind of compensation for it. Um, one thing I was curious of what like drug types, what, what's the most prolific uh, narcotic that you that you guys see? Uh, it used to be marijuana. Um, now it's fentanyl. Fentanyl is just everywhere. It's yeah. Wow. It's crazy. It's absolutely. And crazy. just in pill form. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, so that's most of what you see. Now? That's most of what we're seeing. Are yeah. you, are you seeing any meth still or not much? Uh, we've seen some, but it's fentanyl is huge. Oh man. Yeah. I mean, that, that's fucking scary. I mean, I, I saw a stat the other day. It was like 110,000, uh, people died last year of, of, uh, overdoses yeah i don't mm. i don't know what you know any of the figures but i just uh, shit you just stop on any street corner and look yeah. at the zombies and yeah. and you can see that we've got a little bit of a problem yeah it's fucking nuts um man so how how did i guess transitioning into the call of duty stuff and uh the terminal list stuff how two things i guess how did those opportunities come about uh and was it a challenge for you in terms of leadership allowing you to do that stuff while you're doing Bortac. Yeah. So, um, so it started like, ah, it's kind of over 10 years ago. I, I, I'd done a family photo, uh, or I was trying to get family photos. And one of my buddies who he was, uh, he was a free fall instructor. He's a recon dude, um, up in Phoenix. Uh, Jason swore he, uh, he had a, like a, photography business straight a straight a photography and he did like these really cool like composite pictures and stuff like that so i hit him up for hey, i want to do family photos he's like yeah man i'm not exactly an olin mills but <laughs> you know and i said okay well how about we do like zombie post apocalyptic you know apocalyptic family photos and he's like he was all in so i we took these you know these badass you know like cool pictures and and then uh one of the guys from Patriot Ordnance Factory, uh, oh, yeah. Frank DeSomo, uh, or DeSoma, he he saw that and, and he's like, I want this model. He's like, get this model. I want him to be our Patriot on on my you know logo and all this you know all of our advertisements. And my buddy's like, dude, this guy's not gonna do your. <laughs> he's not gonna yeah. dress up like a, a Patriot and you know parade around and everything. Yeah. And 
And so he, I, I was scooping dog shit in my backyard and I get this phone call. He's like, Hey dude, I know the answer. I know what you're going to tell me, but, um, I promised this guy that, you know, that I would ask you. So would you like come be you know, like dress up like a Patriot and hold one of these guys, you know, this guy's rifle. I was like, yeah, you're right, dude. Fuck off. There's no way I'm going to do it. He's like, all right, the guy, he, he said he'd give you like a couple G's and a couple rifles. At the time, I had no, all I had was my issued yeah. firearms, you know. I'm like, dude, like, I, well, shit, now you have yeah, my I interest. Like, I was like, hell yeah. I was like, do I, do I bring my own flag or like, you know, like what? <laughs> so, yeah, so I did that, man. And then it just kind of, then another company, you know, he's like, hey, I got this other company that wants to do, and I just started doing some of that stuff, like just kind of modeling stuff in the tactical industry. And then um, another one of my buddies, uh, Jim Staley, started uh, TACGAS, which is a media company. And, um, so I started doing stuff for him and that's when, uh, Activision and Call of Duty and, uh, Petrol and those guys, um, Infinity Ward started kind of seeing what he was doing. And, uh, so that kind of got me into that and it just, you know, started doing the Call of Duty stuff and kind of blew up from there. So on the Call of Duty stuff, did you have him in, in the vest with the fucking reflective balls and all that, or was it more transitional page he, to page photos. yeah so he didn't do he didn't do the mocap i don't know who did i don't know if they're i mean they could still be using the same mocap from when you guys did it. i have yeah. no idea i mean this the, Shit, they probably are the capabilities of the stuff that they're able to digitally remaster and do all that stuff it's it's mind-blowing yeah um but now for him we've just done like um i think most of the stuff we've done we've done is like stills and stuff oh, like that you. so like on the little on the game you know, like all the entry screens and covers and stuff like that, you know, gotcha. so. Yeah, Fuck, that's cool. Um, and then the terminal list thing, how did that come about? That came about from uh, a guy I know in the industry, which you know, like a lot of guys know him, Justin Melnick. Yeah. Um, so he uh, he said that they had reached out to him, um, but he was, you know, his involvement in SEAL team, they didn't want like some confusion over, you know, like oh, characters yeah. or something like that, so. Um, so he put me in touch with, um, Jared Shaw. Um, and, uh, so I talked to him and they, you know, asked me like what my dog's, you know, capabilities were and stuff like that. And so you said he was um, great with peanut butter. Yeah. He's great. With, <laughs> but, uh, He'll blow your fucking mind with peanut butter. Yeah. No. So I just took him out. I did go out to LA and meet with their, I think it was their, one of their, their dog wrangler and just basically show that. He's not like a 16 pound shih tzu that yeah. he's ad, you know, somewhat as advertised, you know? So, yeah. um, and then they asked, you know, the director then called me and he's like, you know, what, you know, you know, he's like, well, will your dog do this, this, and this? I said, yeah. And he goes, well, will he do it for an actor? And I'm like, dude, it, you know, he'll do it with me. He'd probably do it with me off screen, but it's going to be, he's going to be looking at me and it's going to be really weird, you know? And he's like, well, what, you know, what, uh, you know, are you fit? Are you, you know, can you, could, could you do this role? And he was, are you comfortable with firearms? <laughs> like, and like, I'm scared of guys. Yeah. I can't do it. Like, you know, did he so, know what you do, did for a little? No, oh, okay. no. So, you know, so I gave him a little background and stuff and, um, and so I went out and met with them and everything. And, and he had me send over like a couple little, uh, cuts or whatever. And, and so that worked out, but that was, it was a cool experience, yeah. man. A great bunch of dudes. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. I, I love that series. It's so good. Um, so what, uh, well, I guess I'm curious, was there any conflict? Was Border Patrol at all apprehensive or were they super supportive of you doing all that stuff? I would say it wasn't even on their radar. I mean, I, I have to fill out, I had to fill out like work authorizations and stuff like that just to see that there's no like conflict of interest. There's not like... Um, this company is not involved in like import or, US yeah, or import export of, you know, stuff yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. But, um, it's not like, um, yeah, it's, it's not no a big, big deal. deal. Yeah. Um, was, uh, was that process, um, of, of going through all of that, uh, on their radar as far as trying to like incorporate the, uh, recruiting component like have, have they expressed any interest in you doing shows like this or being a part of any no of that? no i i don't you know like my command staff knows you know like some of the stuff that i do um outside of work but as far as like big border patrol they i mean i'm freaking 
I'm nobody. I'm just yeah. agent dipshit over there. You know, <laughs> they don't No, yeah. I don't, I haven't been asked to do yeah. anything at all. That's you surprising. Know? I mean, to me that like, Again, if they're having trouble, throw some money and have a Captain America poster boy kind of thing selling selling <laughs> suit, war bonds. Suit, suit back up yeah. in the the Patriot outfit. Yeah, uh, but now the our our you know our uh, Bortac command has now you know prior to the show I, I spoke to them because I didn't you know uh, I've done other podcasts and I wasn't able to talk about like what my you know I have this like thirteen year or fifteen year gap of what have you been doing and it's yeah. I've always had to just say like. You know, I've been some working stuff. in special operations in some capacity. You know, yeah. I've never been able to really talk about it. So, um, with the uh, with their new push, you know, my my command staff uh, Bortac is extremely supportive and oh, that's cool and everything. So they're they're yeah. they're great, and hopefully, you know, we can continue to uh, do more. Yeah, you know, because we are we're we're needing dudes, man. We're we're we recruit. We like to get dudes from you know, regiment and, and the teams and stuff like that. So yeah. it's always great to see those guys showing up at the, sure. the tryouts. It's just a lot of the guys, I don't, you know, when we train with the other units, a lot of them don't know, you know, who we are or, or, or they don't think of, of it as an option. You know, yeah. it's, I know I hadn't, you know, I, I had no clue who Bortac yeah. was, you sure. know, yeah. but it's, it's honestly been a great, it's a great, it's, a, it's a great gem for dudes that, <clears throat> you know, love the job and stuff like that, but just don't like the, the six and 10 month deployments anymore. Sure. You know, you're able to still have a family and you're all able that. to do, you know, you go do your op at night and then you show up and take your kids to school. Yeah. You know, I yeah. mean, it's kind of like the best of both worlds, you know, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so what for you now, like how, how much more time are, are you going to spend doing what you're doing and, and what's the, what's the long game? Ah, man. So I've got, about four years left. Um, I would say four years or, or four shitty days. <laughs> you know? um, One bad shift. Yeah. No, I've got, um, you know, I've got a couple small films that I'm, that I'm <laughs> I've been uh, asked to help out with. So I've, I've got, uh, we're filming uh, next month or a, little, a real small project, but can um, you, you say what it is or no? Um, I don't know if he wants me to throw it out there, but it's okay. with a, a, a ranger buddy that oh, okay. he's he's got some stuff up in Seattle. So, um, but uh, that's it's a real small deal. And then and then I got hit up by a producer for one in in March. But um, I don't know if any other stuff like that comes up, then we'd hop on it. You know, with with or without Rex. But the uh, long game would probably be you know my buddy that's that's running Tack Gas. We've he's been pulling for me to come over there full time. And, and, uh, I'm just so close to retirement that, um, you know, it'd be, for it'd sure. be, it'd be really stupid to, to not, you know, uh, finish out. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, no, that makes sense. Um, that's, that's probably it, man. Yeah. I, and then you know, you'll, you'll probably go over and do that, that type of stuff full time. That or just, Freaking sell everything and move to a beach and yeah. be a beach bum yeah. in a hammock somewhere. Yeah. Man. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> you, you've earned it for sure. Uh, one thing that uh, is Bortac, do they have uh, relaxed grooming standards? Like you can rock the beard and they don't give a fuck? Or? It, it kind of depends on where you're at. Because yeah. um, most most agents, you can't have facial hair, right? Or you can't have a beard. You know, a lot of the a lot of the SWAT teams and stuff that, that I work with, um, we have had like – more like the more um, restricted uh, standard than most of the guys we work with. Oh, really? You know, you go to God, you go to Phoenix. You know, some of SWAT dudes or uh, marshals or or DEA, any of these other agencies, dude. They're looking at you like, man, you've you know, you've only been growing your shit for like a month. Like, what you know, like what's yeah. up with you? Yeah, you know. But um, it just depends on where you're at. Who are commanders you know yeah. are at the time and stuff like that you yeah. know so yeah i'm tracking uh well i have a, a gift for you um you gave me a coin which uh, we've already already thrown up on the thing so i'm gonna return the favor and, oh, and, uh, and then add something to it good old champion Troy silver and uh and john johnson out in california big supporters of the show and uh, and sent all that nice. stuff out there for each guest so that's really cool thanks a lot i appreciate it yeah absolutely yep so oh dude that's cool yeah Yep. So we, we appreciate that. And, uh, yeah, thank, thanks again for coming, man. I know you're, you're busy as shit. You don't have a ton of free time being 
uh, having to drive drive out here nonetheless. And uh, But I, I can't thank you enough for coming and talking. I mean, it's something that very few people know about. I've had a lot of people ask uh, to, to try to get uh, a guy such as yourself on to, to talk about what you guys do. And it is fascinating stuff. And uh, and it's a big, big ticket item for a long time, and I think will be for uh, for a fair bit of time to come. So, I uh, appreciate you coming. No, thanks for having us, man. It's been it's been great. Yeah. Uh, so, on on behalf of Rex uh, and uh, and the entire crew, I just want to say, uh, you know, for all the mic drop listeners, thanks uh, again, and as always for tuning in. Without your support, we wouldn't be able to bring you uh, shows with uh, such a dynamic duo such as these guys. So. Uh, Thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, choke yourself. And until next time, this is Mike Drop.